The strategy for maximizing your CPP and OIS benefits has become more nuanced with these changes. The decision about when to start taking your CPP, for instance, now has even greater implications. Waiting until age 70 can increase your CPP payments by 42% compared to starting at 65. Hello everyone, and welcome back. I'm Zoe, and today we're addressing something that affects millions of Canadians the significant updates to the Canada Pension Plan CPP and Old Age Security OAAs. These changes could have a substantial impact on your retirement planning and current benefits, so I encourage you to watch this entire video carefully. Whether you're already receiving benefits or just starting to think about retirement, the information I'm about to share is crucial for your financial future. Before we dive into the specific changes, let's take a moment to understand why these updates matter so much. The Canadian retirement system is built on multiple pillars, with CPPP and OAs forming the foundation of retirement security for most Canadians. These programs have evolved significantly since their inception, and the latest changes represent some of the most substantial modifications we've seen in recent years. Let's start with the fundamentals of the CPP. The Canada Pension Plan isn't just another government program, it's a comprehensive social insurance system that's been carefully designed to provide financial security throughout your retirement years. Unlike many other government benefits, CPP is funded entirely through the contributions of workers and their employers. This makes it particularly stable and reliable as a source of retirement income. Think of it as a forced savings program that ensures you'll have a basic level of income when you retire, become disabled or pass away, leaving benefits for your survivors. The beauty of CPP lies in its predictability and sustainability. When you contribute to CPP during your working years, you're essentially buying into a guaranteed income stream for your retirement. These contributions are invested by the CPP Investment Board, one of the world's largest pension funds, which works to ensure the long-term sustainability of the program. Recent enhancements to the CPP have made it even more valuable as a retirement planning tool, but they've also made the system more complex to navigate. Old age security works quite differently from CPP, and understanding these differences is crucial for optimal retirement planning. OS is funded through general tax revenue, which means you don't make direct contributions like you do with CPP. Instead, your eligibility is based on your years of residency in Canada. This makes OAS more universal in nature, but it also means it's subject to different rules and considerations, particularly when it comes to income testing and the potential clawback of benefits. Now, let's talk about the recent changes that are reshaping both these programs. The CPPP Enhancement Program, which began its implementation in 2019, represents the most significant modification to the plan since its creation in 1966. This enhancement is gradually increasing the amount of retirement income that CPP will replace, moving from 25% of your pensionable earnings to 33.33%. While this might sound like a modest increase, the long-term impact on your retirement income could be substantial. Let me illustrate this with a practical example. Consider Sarah, a worker earning $60,000 annually. Under the old CPP rules, her maximum retirement benefit would have been significantly lower than what she can expect under the enhanced program. The trade-off, of course, is that both Sarah and her employer need to contribute more to the plan during her working years. This is where careful retirement planning becomes essential understanding how these increased contributions affect your current budget while appreciating the long-term benefits they'll provide. The impact of these changes varies significantly depending on your age and career stage. For current retirees, the immediate effects center around payment adjustments and cost of living increases. If you're already receiving CPP and OAS benefits, you'll want to pay close attention to how these changes affect your monthly payments. Those in their late career stage, particularly those aged 55 to 64, face some crucial decisions about when to start taking their benefits. Let's explore this further with a real-world scenario. Meet John and Martha, both 68 years old and currently receiving both CPP and OAs. The recent changes affect them in several ways, from adjustments to their payment amounts to potential eligibility for additional benefits. Their situation demonstrates why it's crucial to regularly review your benefit status and understand how new provisions might apply to your specific case. 
For younger workers, the implications of these changes are even more significant. If you're in your 30s or 40s, you'll be contributing more to CPP throughout your career, but you'll also be eligible for substantially higher benefits when you retire. This creates new considerations for your retirement planning, particularly regarding how much you should be saving through other vehicles like RSPs and TFSS. One of the most common questions I receive is about maximizing benefits under these new rules. The strategy for maximizing your CPP and OAS benefits has become more nuanced with these changes. The decision about when to start taking your CPP, for instance, now has even greater implications. Waiting until age 70 can increase your CPP payments by 42% compared to starting at 65, but this decision needs to be weighed against your individual circumstances, including your health, financial needs, and other sources of retirement income. Tax planning has also become more critical under these new rules. The interaction between CPP, OAS, and other income sources can significantly impact your after-tax retirement income. Understanding how to manage your income sources to minimize the OAS clawback while maximizing your overall benefits requires careful planning and, in many cases, professional advice. Special considerations apply for several groups, including immigrant seniors, international residents, and those with disabilities. For immigrant seniors, understanding how their years of residency affect their OAS eligibility is crucial. International agreements with many countries can help qualify for benefits, but navigating these agreements requires careful attention to detail. Let's talk about some common mistakes to avoid. One of the most frequent errors I see is people applying for benefits at the wrong time. Your optimal start date depends on various factors including your health, financial needs, and other income sources. Another common mistake is failing to consider the tax implications of different benefit combinations. Remember, both CPP and OAs are taxable income and poor planning can result in unnecessary tax burden or benefit clawbacks. So what actions should you take now? First, review your current benefits or projected benefits through your My Service Canada account. This online tool provides valuable information about your potential benefit amounts and eligibility. Second, consider consulting with a financial advisor who can help you understand how these changes affect your specific situation. Third, make sure your retirement planning takes into account these new provisions, particularly if you're still in your working years. The government provides several useful tools and resources to help you navigate these changes. The CPP and OS calculators on the Service Canada website can give you a good estimate of your potential benefits. Additionally, the retirement planning tools can help you understand how different retirement ages might affect your benefit amounts. Remember, while these changes to CPP and OAS are significant, they're ultimately designed to provide better retirement security for Canadians. The key is understanding how they affect you personally and adjusting your retirement planning accordingly. Don't hesitate to seek professional advice if you need help navigating these changes. Before we wrap up, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel for more updates on retirement planning and Canadian benefits. If you found this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with anyone who might benefit from this information. Drop your questions in the comments below I read every one and try to address common concerns in future videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll dive deeper into specific retirement planning strategies for different age groups, 